Greetings YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I am so excited to make this video, which, you know, sometimes is not the case. If you ask me how I feel about this month's side quest, it is not only the worst side quest I have ever seen in so many ways. Even worse than like the old re-roll side quest that I hated so much. But it doesn't at all, and I mean really doesn't at all, um, dictate excitement for any level of the player base. I don't know who this month's side quest is for. I just know it's not for you and it's not for me. Uh, it is for, maybe it's for Kabam. Maybe it's for people who just want to laugh at uh, Summoner's misfortune. I don't know. And if you think I'm being too negative or Mr. Negative, people say all the time, Prof, you don't have to play the side quest, so stop acting like it's required. Well, it's still there to give people to play. Side quests are supposed to be there as like an extra incentive to open the game. Because there are people out there who don't open the game much a day. I think when you are a true hardcore member of a gaming community, you just take for granted that not everybody in this community spends hours a day in the arena, or in war, or alliance quest, or battlegrounds, or incursions, because Lord knows, Kabam has made so many different features in the game that could easily get you to commit to hours a day of time and if you've got kids like our man Rome Palmer shout out to Rome can't see him in person this weekend but still um, happy to hear from him when he and I are in the same state but regardless like you got real life so we need new things like Necropolis to keep people interested and it's not just new side quests and small tweaks to things like alliance quests such as raids, which I'm not saying it's small in the sense that it's not a big deal, but it's still not something that I think is going to make or break whether or not somebody plays the game. I just can't imagine somebody being like, well, I was going to delete it. I'm finally walking away from it. But now that I heard that raids are an alliance quest, oh, game changer. Uh, maybe they're out there, but I, I haven't met them if they are. The Deathless 7 Star Champions, though. Now that's something in theory I could get behind. Now maybe they're going to be trash. Maybe they're going to be trophy champs that are kind of like when Kang and Thanos came out and you're like, I'm never going to use these people. I'm never going to use Immortal Iron Fist. Why is this a big deal? Well, you don't want it to just be difficult to get a champion formed. But if you do all the things that requires all the pieces of these Deathless Champions, you want it to be worth it. You, you might even want, want it to be like the case where a Battlegrounds match can be won or lost depending on if that person has the Deathless Champion. That's what Kabam wants the newer champions who are the best to be. That's what they want Kindred to be, to Photon to be, Silk to be. And if you have those champs in your roster, uh, if you have Overseer in your roster and the other person doesn't, you may win. So, all of that is to say, I am really excited about the best promotional video I have ever seen from Marvel Contest of Champions. The people who put this Deathless Guillotine video, of which I'm not going to play it for copyright reasons, but I encourage everybody to go to their official uh, YouTube channel, and I can still kind of scroll through and show some images. But this thing between the, the voiceover, which sounds like a, a Morgan Freeman-esque epic voiceover to the visuals, even the ending where you've got Thanos, nameless Thanos, checking it out. Look at the sword. I mean, this is like something you would see from a $100, $200, $300 million movie trailer. And it's the game that we play. And this is where I get a little choked up. And I don't want to get overly emotional in this video about a nameless seven star. Because you'd think I was probably too emotional. But I got to be a part of this community for the last six years. To the point that I got to actually make enough revenue to take care of my family and play this game. And this is a game that puts out trailers that look like they're from multiple hundreds of millions of dollars worth of a game. And so what a blessing it is. What a blessing it is to get students in my class who want to learn about video production. And I can show them this game. I can talk to them about my YouTube channel. I can say, hey, if my YouTube channel did this well, imagine what yours could do. Because that's the whole motivation for my channel to continue. It's not to make the greatest looking content of all time. Because that's honestly not what you're going to get on this channel. It is oftentimes where you're going to get quantity over quality. It's, it's MCOC McDonald's. You're going to get it fast. You're going to get hot. Sometimes it's going to be correct. Sometimes it's going to be wrong. But you're going to not have to wait four days to get it to you. Or even four hours. You know. 
But that's why I also love teaching at a college where students pay thousands of dollars to be there and I get paid thousands of dollars to teach. How cool is that? And life is all about perspective. You can feel like you're always a victim or you can feel like you're always blessed. Uh, one, I believe, has a substantial better uh, addition to your life expectancy than the other. In this case, the hype for deathless guillotine is real because this video was amazing. And I'm not saying that deathless guillotine has been confirmed to be worth the hype. That is not what this video is about. But the hype in itself is the best we've seen from given the quality of the video that was put out. And I'm excited to encourage people to watch it. I'm going to watch it again after I stop recording this video. And I'm, I'm pumped to be a part of it. Maybe it'll be a letdown. Remember how excited we were for the OG guillotine buff and then it came out and there's some people who just called it at best mid. Maybe Deathless Guillotine will be a mid champion. But for the moment, let's just enjoy the hype before the inevitable disappointment comes, <laughs> uh, which also could be maybe the title of this YouTube channel. And as always, I appreciate your support. I'm getting to go to Texas in the next week with my fiance. The first time I can say I brought my fiance to Texas. How about that? And celebrate that with my family. I'm not going to broadcast, but maybe once the entire week, I am going to take the YouTube uh, channel collar off around my neck and just enjoy the time with family. This is where I really am landing the plane. And I'm still going to produce videos, most of which will not have a webcam, which sometimes people enjoy them more when my face is not in it. I understand that. But I'll have content, especially because the gifting event is launching right as my trip is coming to an end. But at the same time, I'm still going to embrace it. I'm still going to enjoy it. And I'm still going to be in a great mood. So have a good one. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate everybody's support this year. It's been a wonderful year for my life. Ironically, the best year of my life and the worst year on YouTube in six years. So when you find that right balance between uh, engagement, community engagement, and real life engagement, it's a beautiful thing.